We all know VLANs are great and fairly simple to set up. However, depending on your system, how you go about creating VLANs will vary. Since I've already covered how to install OpenSense, let's actually configure a network using VLANs. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and in this episode, we're creating VLANs and OpenSense. There's not much I have to say about VLANs that I haven't covered before. So if you want to learn more about them at a high level, feel free to check out my other two videos. However, since we are creating VLANs on a new operating system, I'll briefly cover this system. The last video I made for VLANs for OpenWRT uses DSA for VLANs, which is built into the Linux kernel. With OpenSense, the underlying operating system is FreeBSD, which has a long-standing, strong history of enterprise networking, making it more than capable of handling VLANs. Because of this, the configuration in this episode will also apply to PFSense. For hardware, I'll be using my generic firewall appliance I installed OpenSense on. Feel free to check out that video in the card above me. For software, I'll be using OpenSense 23.1. With our bases covered, let's create ourselves a VLAN. First, we'll log into OpenSense at 192.168.1.1 with our root user and password. Before we get started, let's cover how to create a basic network, as this isn't something I haven't covered in my videos, even conceptually. This will be important, as creating a VLAN will basically rely on these same steps after we create our virtual interface. To create a basic network, we first must add and assign an interface. On the left-hand side, click Interfaces, then Assignments. Next to New Interface, choose the interface you want to add in the dropdown. In my case, I'll leave IGB2 selected. For description, I'll call it LAN2. Then all the way to the right, click the plus button to add the new interface, and then click Save. Congrats! We have a new interface where our new network will live. Next, click on LAN2 under Interfaces. Check off Enable Interface. With the expanded options, Next to IPv4 configuration type, click the drop down and select static IPv4. Scroll to the bottom and under static IPv4 configuration, next to IPv4 address, we'll define an IP address for this network interface. This is where you begin to define your network. For this video, I'll choose the address 192.168.100.1. Next to it, we have the subnet mask, insider notation. This is effectively the size of the network. For this video, we'll choose your standard forward slash 24 network. Once this is all complete, click save, then apply changes at the top. Moving on, we'll set up DHCP so our IPs can be handed out automatically. On the left side again, click Services, DHCP v4, then LAN2. In here, check off Enable DHCP Server on the LAN2 interface. Next, let's set up a range or a pool for DHCP to assign IP addresses from. Let's choose 192.168.100.50 to 192.168.100.254. This means that any address from 192.168.100.1 to 192.168.100.49 will not be assigned by DHCP, giving you 48 static IP addresses you can use for this network. 
If you'd like to do any static IP assignment via DHCP using MAC addresses, refer to the section at the bottom of this page. After this, click Save. Great, now we've set up our first basic network using a physical interface. With this example complete, creating a VLAN requires only a few additional steps in the beginning. To create a VLAN, go to Interfaces, Other Types, VLAN. Then click the plus symbol to the right. In the pop-up, we'll fill in the following. For device, we can leave this as blank, as the name will be generated. But for this example, I will give it a name VLAN 0.150 to match the tag we'll be assigning it. For parent, we'll select the physical interface we just made prior, that being IGB2. For VLAN tag, let's set this to 150, though it could be any number between 1 and 4094. For VLAN priority, we'll leave this as 0. However, if the network will house important devices and traffic, then we can increase the priority accordingly. For description, write down what this VLAN would be used for, such as IoT devices. In this example, I'll write down VLAN 150. To finish making the interface, click Save and then Apply. The next steps will be pretty much a repeat of what we just did for creating a basic network. Because of that, we will cover this section quicker than before. First, return to Interfaces, then Assignments. Next to New Interface, select VLAN 0.150 we just created. For description, call it your network designation as before. I'll use VLAN 150. Then click the plus and then Save. Now, let's configure the interface. Click on VLAN 150 on the left side. Check off Enable Interface. Next to IPv4 Configuration Type, select Static IPv4. At the bottom, next to IPv4 Address, type in 192.168.150.1. For NetMask, we'll use forward slash 24 again. Click Save, and then click Apply Changes to set up the virtual interface. Let's return to the DHCP section to configure it for our new VLAN. Go to Services, DHCP v4, VLAN 150. Check off Enable DHCP Server. For range, let's go with 192.168.150.50 to 192.168. That 150, that 254, and then click Save. With that, we've completed our VLAN setup. To ensure it works, let's test it out. For this test, we'll be using my Raspberry Pi managed switch I made in a prior video. Before we continue with our test, let's do a reboot for good measure. When I tested this out before recording, I noticed my VLAN wasn't working. Only after hours of troubleshooting, I found that rebooting made it all work. I can't explain this, but just a quirk I discovered. You know the old adage, turn it off and on when things don't work. Now that we've rebooted, let's connect the firewall, the Raspberry Pi managed switch, and my laptop to the switch. Once complete, we should get an IP address in the IP range of our VLAN. Perfect! Looks like we were assigned an IP from the firewall. Let's test out connectivity by logging in to the OpenSense GUI from our browser using the VLAN interface IP of 192.168.150.1. Prior to this, you'll need to set up 
a firewall rule. I won't cover that in this video, but in another one, you'll learn more about OpenSense firewall rules and firewall rules in general. As expected, we were able to visit the GUI and log in, proving we are on and connected to the VLAN network. And that covers our VLAN demonstration and OpenSense. As you just saw, setting up VLANs and OpenSense is fairly easy. Once you create your VLAN interface, it's the same as setting up any basic network. The only difference is once you have VLAN tagged interface, you'll need a device on the other end that can accept VLAN tagged traffic, such as a managed switch that will let you use those networks wherever in your deployment. Best of all, for any PFSense fans watching, this configuration should mostly apply and shouldn't have any significant trouble following along. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. Want to get started on your own OpenSense firewall? Watch my video here on installing OpenSense. Want to learn more about OpenSense, PFSense, or BSD networking? Drop me a comment below and we could discuss it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.